I'm Maria Menunos, and you're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Welcome back, guys, to the Ooh. Very Cavalry After Show, Season 3, Episode 5. We've got a great show for you guys tonight. Kristen is uh, taking out some customers, and has Brittany really moved on from Stone? Justin and Scoot, they're finally moving down to Nashville, y'all. <laughs> we got our special segment, Like a Boss. We got some news, and we got some predictions. But first, I am your host, Eric Sinsley, and to my left... We are joined by the beautiful fashionista Ebene. Hello. How, how are you doing? Good. How are you? I am well. Good. You're giving me energy right now. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I need, I need <laughs> yeah. this. I need this. Wake her up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and to her left, we have the reality show fiend, Miss Diamond. What is up? Hello. What's up, guys? Hey. Uh, it was finally, we're, we're moving along here. Yes. Right? Yeah. We got some momentum going along in this season. Next week's going to be great. But what were your overall thoughts on tonight's show? I liked the episode. I thought it was really funny. You know, Jay trying to expand the farm and buy these donkeys. I think that's <laughs> hilarious. Many I, donkeys? Yeah. My thing is, I'm not the animal girl. Like, that's so not my style. But I love that Kristen's, like, go along to get along. She's like, yeah, okay, we can get them. Like, why are you even entertaining buying donkeys? I think that's, like, so insane. But I they guess live maybe... On a farm. Right, for their life, I guess it works perfectly fine. So I thought that was that was funny. You know, I actually... Um, so there's this foundation. I don't even remember, remember what it's called. But they what they do is they donate um, miniature ponies to blind people so that they can have it as a pet. It's seeing I mini pony. Mm -hmm. And, like, they're super intelligent, like you saw in the video. But they live for a really long time. And they can be house trained. So, like, it's just a really good pet to have for somebody who's, like, you know, seeing impaired. So... Oh, just a little fact for you guys. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I initially thought that the fact that Jay cannot throw an axe <laughs> and get it on oh, to yeah. the bullseye was just hilarious. And he was like the only one. I think he legit was like the only person. Maybe he did get it eventually, but like yeah, from what we saw, yeah. he was like the only person that couldn't get it. And everyone's like one-handed. Kristen's like, second try was a bullseye. Yeah, it was like insane. And he was still struggling. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was hilarious. Because you know, he's like the, he's the macho athlete. football yeah. athlete Quarterback. guy. Yeah. yeah, and he cannot she throw has an a, axe. He should have a good arm. <laughs> right. um, I also I also thought getting a peek into Kristen's warehouse oh, was like, was holy moly. It was eye-opening for sure. And that brings us into our first topic tonight, which was Kristen and her work. Um, we saw her bring, kind of reward her top, I don't know, was it 10 customers? Her top yeah. customers, her top spending customers. And she basically treated them to a weekend in Nashville. She took them out. And I don't know, what were you guys' thoughts on that? I thought that was, like, the coolest idea I think I've ever seen in, a like, a boss or someone, um, you know, having a business. I don't think I've ever seen anyone do that or heard of anyone doing that. And I think that's such an amazing way to, A, connect with your customers or, you know, have them know that, like, you see them, you appreciate them, thank you for spending your money. I mean, she said they spent, like, tens of thousands of dollars. That's they great. all look, what? like, very... Yes. I mean, gifts and joy for themselves. They probably got some money. They all look like very normal, yes. like housewives or like working women. So it doesn't look like any of them are like billionaires, like wearing Gucci all the way. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So it's like some to, relatable woman. Yeah. So the fact that they're spending tens of thousands of dollars, I mean, I think it was a beautiful way to like show appreciation for her customers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I definitely think it sets her apart from other companies and especially other companies that are um, widely based i mean a lot of her sales come from social media you know so right. i feel like and i feel like that's a, it's happening a lot especially today where people are trying to sell their goods their company uh, products on social media and so the fact that kristen is doing something different is probably going to set her apart from other yeah, companies. No, plus she does have the name to go along with it but she has the name she has you know the two stores and then on top of that you know selling online for the most part but i think yeah that's like a great way to show you know mm -hmm. a great business practice mm -hmm. yeah loved it i will say watching Kristen in high school and then um roll over into the hills and watching her party and kind of play on the villain role, I would have never guessed this coming, of her having this huge empire, 
having that factory and that warehouse. Right. I just, I, 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 I believed it, and but until tonight, I like was like, holy. But see, like, that's the thing about the reality shows that's so crazy is that you really never get to like really know the person that you're watching. You only get to see like a little snippet here, a snippet there, and you don't really get to see like the full person. Like we obviously, like we never would have seen her being a girl boss and like owning her thing and living on a farm like that would be the last thing I would think that would be like in her interest yeah so it's like but obviously we didn't know her you know mm-hmm. so this is I love that she has her reality show so we can like really get to know her mm-hmm. as a person mm-hmm. yeah I mean just some of her vocabulary I'm like I just I never saw it because I just have her Laguna Beach right mentality wildness in my head. so <laughs> I don't know props to you Kristen we are uh, we are here for you mm-hmm. so that brings me to my next question because Kristen and Lauren Conrad were such ri- were such rivalries in high school, right? And they're kind of doing similar things in life. Mm-hmm. You know, they're both moms. Yes, they married. Put, they put their mothership first. They're married, and they have all these businesses. Who do you think is more successful? And it doesn't have to be monetarily. It could be just as a woman. I'm gonna... And I'm gonna let you guys answer it because I'm a guy and I don't want to get crucified. <laughs> Well, you won't. Um, and if you do, then you we got won't. your back. You got my back. We're yes. coming for you. We yeah. got your back. All right. Um, I'm gonna start off by saying I think that Kristen is more successful in the sense that I l- like her more. Like I find Lauren to be semi boring and out of the public eye, which is fine. It's her prerogative. But when I do see her, she's very like lackluster. When I see <laughs> Kristen talking she is hilarious and she's got this great tone to her voice and she knows how to speak clearly and she makes she cracks jokes all the time i love her laugh she's like witty and cool and like a down-to-earth awesome boss ass bitch (laughs) you know yeah so i so regardless of however much i'm like choosing Kristen like as the most successful in that regard okay dang well, she really sold it, didn't she? Huh? Yeah. Like, a diamond really sold all, that all the way down. Because I was going to say Lauren, just because, you know, she definitely was way more likable on the show um, on The Hills and Laguna Beach and, you know, all those other ones. So she was more likable. Plus, we got to see, because in The Hills, they chronicled her more. You know, we didn't really see Kristen. So we got to see, like, her internship in Paris and, like, all Mm -hmm. these other amazing Mm -hmm. opportunities that Mm -hmm. she got to experience. Mm -hmm. So, in one sense, it's, like, she's had experiences that Kristen has never had, like, working in Fashion Week and being in the fashion industry and, like, that world. That's something that, like, is a different experience. And it's hard to, like, really compare the two women because they're both so amazing. Yeah. You know? So, you know, I feel like they're both amazing, both very successful. Um, I think they've had different experiences and have come up differently. So Kristen's doing her business now and married with her family. And, you know, throughout uh, Lauren Conrad's career, she's had, like, an amazing success. Yeah, totally. So, like, it's definitely totally. different. But, like, if we have to choose, it's like, I, I'm, I'll go Lauren. Oh, I'll go Lauren. Stirring it up. Yeah. <laughs> this should say very uh, Conrad on there. <laughs> oh, no, 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 Look no, at no. you trying to call me out here. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. That was a question. <laughs> and you I answered, answered honestly. Question, but they're both amazing women. Um, but we would love to hear, ooh, the boxing, the boxing round. Um, Gloves are on. <laughs> right. <laughs> but we would love to hear your opinion on this, so please comment below. Be nice, okay? They're both amazing, successful women. We're not trying to start another rivalry i'm sure they're both civil (laughs) now and friends and i don't think any of that is even a big deal um but please like subscribe and comment we love 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 to talk about our opinions about the show we love to hear yours so please tune in if you're not able to watch you can always check us out on itunes and on spotify and make sure to give us that five star rating awesome and on that note let's discuss miss Brittany, who is dating PJ. She said she's not exclusive. Mm-hmm. Um, do you guys think it's... Well, let's back up. She seems very happy. She's very gloaty uh, with him. Um, do you think it's too soon? And and PJ asked her, 
What did he ask her? Do you think you're beyond repair? Which is First so of all, rude. what did that even mean? So rude. I thought that yeah, was, it was so a little, rude. It was a little aggressive. Um, right? Like I think he... <laughs> I think he's definitely fishing to see where she's at, which I mean, if you can't if you can't figure that out for yourself being that she's been single for 2 months, then you you're being a little ridiculous and naive. Like he should know that she was madly in love with this man for X amount of years and yeah. it's very fresh. So, right. yes, she's in a state of not probably wanting to do too much too soon. So, it's a weird time and a little manipulative almost to bring that up at this point. Mm -hmm. You know, I know he doesn't want to waste his time, but he's also like doing like pursuing her. So it's just a weird question at this time. Yeah. Um, but I really think that it's interesting that she is, you know, when he says like, when he asked that, I think he, he's just needing her to s He's hoping that she's going to say, no, no, I'm totally over it. He wants to maybe just hear that, yeah. even though he knows th better than, you know. But he also said, like, I'm, you know, I'm here to kind of stay and I'm. Gonna... Yeah. yeah. I mean, the thing is, is like even in a relationship, right? Like you hear this all the time where people are like, well, I've been with this person for X amount of time. But like I was over it like six right? months ago. Yeah. So she could have been at that space. So th maybe that's why he was asking yeah. to be like, where exactly are you on the spectrum? Um even though, however, that wasn't the case for her. Like, she was still very much, like, into stone up until, like, the fact that she yeah. moved out. So, I mean, I think the situation's very tricky because it's so fresh. The wound is literally not even healed yet. There's not even, there's, like, barely a Band-Aid touching it. So it's, mm -hmm. I think still it's bleeding. too soon for her. To, <laughs> right, still bleeding. I think it's too soon for her to try to, like, be dating or, like, getting into a whole new relationship. It's so easy to get swooped up, be rebounded. He's showing you things that you didn't get in your other relationship, so. It seems like she's jumping ship, like, and diving in too quick. Yeah. Like, I think it's fine if she were dating around other. She needs more people on the court. Right. Oh, a roster. Yeah. She needs a roster. I'm she into does. a roster. Because she, she does seem like one of those girls, only from what we've seen, where she likes or she gets into these long lasting relationships and then she hasn't been in one in I don't, four years and then she goes right to another one and she's seems like she's pretty much all in. What, she hasn't been in one for four years? No, I think, I'm saying, like, I think she was with Stone for four yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, she was, yeah, with Stone. So and she then, went yeah. from that to... She was monkey A new relationship, yeah. yeah. And then, and the date opened up from what we saw, um, PJ asking her, like, hey, what do you, do you like working 70 hours a week? Like, I think it, that could be a good preliminary question, but it just seemed, I don't know, it just seemed like... Like Stone? <laughs> yeah because like, you know it's funny because that was literally one of his complaints yeah. that she works too much but then yeah. he covered up and he he seemed very supportive of her yeah because she was like do you have a problem with that right like right. you how many like yeah it's it's i think he's really you know i think the roles are almost a little reversed from what we probably see like i'm stereotypically saying like he was kind of in the position of the female where she's like doing her checklist like I need to make sure that I'm committing to the right person. So do you do this? And how do you feel about this? And are you ready for this? Mm -hmm. So he's kind of going through the checklist because he's probably ready for that serious relationship and he's sick of wasting his time. And she's like this hardworking male or person who doesn't really have time for a relationship, is probably fresh out of a relationship, heart's not ready to open yet. You know, so I, th I think the roles are really reversed. So it's a really interesting dynamic. So I can't hurt him for for having his checklist and yeah. I definitely can't hurt her for working 70 hours a week like work girl yeah. work it like you know yeah. like nobody else is going to take care of you and if you want to be successful you have to put in the work that's any person you know what I mean and so I'm glad it, it seems like he's going to respect that but and you know what the beauty of it is she's now in the position of being successful like that woman that she was not before when she met stone right she's now this new person and now she's hopefully finding somebody who respects this new person you know what i mean so she's she's like gotten rid of her shell but i think she needs to stay single for a little while i longer. agree i i agree i think that's the, the smartest way to do it and especially for somebody who seems to be in relationships one relationship to the next or in long-term relationships and then the next relationship right away she you you definitely need to figure out yourself and she has not had that chance like right. at, at all
Right. So yeah. that needs to happen, and it seems like it's not going to. Yeah, and it seemed like she had moved on, and everything was going well with PJ, mm -hmm. and then her friend drops this huge bomb mm -hmm. on her, saying that Stone is with another woman. Moved on. Who She's like, I'm is a woman who Stone used to call beautiful in front of Britney, mm -hmm. and Britney was like... A girl always knows. You and, always know. And he took this new girl to Britney and Stone's old spot. So this is in him. Mexico. This is him being manipulative again, trying to fuck with her brain and trying to be spiteful. Like this isn't stuff you do to somebody that you a truly loved and that b you respected. You don't go with a new girl so soon to where you used to take your ex-girlfriend mm -hmm. you don't start posting photos he's like trying to make her see it and he she probably blocked him so she didn't have to but he's like doing this on purpose to hurt her like it's just petty and it's immature and it's exactly why she left him i agree 100 yeah. percent. i even i wrote down is he doing the let's move on but secretly hurt each other and hope that you see this on is. social media of course he is do you think britney's friend was in the right or the wrong for showing her the photo. I think in the right. Uh, I don't know. It's I think because she was worried. Position. That was like st that thought in her head was like, I don't want to hurt him. She's like, honey, let me give it to you straight because she doesn't want her thinking like, maybe I shouldn't move on and I should right. take it slow. Right. Because you know, she should. But Brittany you know. was kind of, you know, going back and forth and like on the yeah. fence about, oh, my gosh, you know, what if I never get over him? So she was like, actually, you should get over him because he's doing whatever yeah, he's doing. It, it's the hero So, facts. and I think that actually helps. I can only speak for myself, but I think that actually helps you when you're like going over a breakup to see that that person has also moved on or like it's also is, destroying. Is, it's destroying, yeah. but I think it helps you to be like, "Okay, bet. I got you. Like, yeah. I don't need to be worried about you mm -hmm. cuz clearly you're not worried about me." Yeah. And it gives you that momentum to be like, "Okay, cool. I can do whatever I want. I don't need to be concerned." Yeah. I also think that Britney's friends did not like Stone and they didn't like what Stone brought out of Britney and so I think her friends are like my my example is right here mm -hmm. like what, what's that saying my, my, my point right here mm -hmm. that's not the word <laughs> my uh my I, reasoning or no, something no I don't know but anyways <laughs> yeah like look like he's yeah. doing he hasn't stopped being a douche yeah. to you yeah um right and so I think it was good that she did that it's yeah. harsh to put it right in her face but Sometimes people need a big slap in the face of, with something. She needed that moment. Yeah. yeah. So. Let us know what you guys think. I mean, seriously, do you think that that was a bitch move or was it a boss move? That, yeah. That, I mean, ooh, that could be somebody's boss move. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll change my boss move. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we're we're rooting for you, Brittany. Just just stay away from Stone, please. Yeah. Throw that stone in the lake. And it, and it does look like she is, uh, Brittany is still with PJ, but we'll touch on that later. So make sure you stick around for that. Yes. Let's talk about Justin and Scoot. Okay. Love right? it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. They are talking about moving from this big city, Los Angeles, to Nashville, which in some regards, is a big city. I honestly feel. don't know why they're mo he's wanting to move. Is it for the show? I would assume, but has they even expressed why? No, because Scoot wants to move. I Scoot think... is the one who wants a more like slow, chill lifestyle. He doesn't like the like craziness oh. of LA. Oh, so okay. really, it's for Scoot. Mm -hmm. And also, you can get um, hints of big city in Nashville, and and especially in terms yeah. of this industry. It's a big city. You it's know, like you a, can get your yeah. modeling in, you can get your singing in, mm -hmm. acting. Party so I, in. I think it's a good, happy, happy medium. Yeah. Um, what do you guys think is going to happen once they do move and settle in? Do you think they're okay without looking on social media, without looking into the future, what's happening today? But just based solely on tonight's episode, do you think... Because I think that Scoot had, or sorry, Justin has some cold feet. Well, here's what I think. I think that they're going to move and it's going to be fine for a while. And it's going to be good to the point where Scoot says, this is going so well, let's go a little further and might push for marriage again or push for a family. And then, you know, that is going to probably upset Justin because he's like, 
he's already said it. He's like, I feel like I'm already committing so much. Why? How is? How can he even be asking for more? So I think he might snap, and they might have this huge fight, and then be fine again. Mm-hmm. But like, what do you guys even think about this relationship dynamic? Because it is so. It's like two different people on two different spectrums. Like Justin, I think is like everyone. Like you, you're scared to get hurt. Maybe he's been in a like a relationship where he was the uh, yeah. But he did express that he was in a relationship with a guy who was like 15 years older than him, mm-hmm. and that relationship didn't work out. And so it's kind of like the scary thing to like commit to someone who's younger, who's younger, and you yeah. know feels like maybe I don't want to do this anymore because maybe that's what he didn't. That's what he did in his last relationship. Mm-hmm. So we always projecting our own fears onto people. Yeah, and he and Justin only knows L.A. So it's like. There's so much going on here. There's so much uh, social life things to do. I mean, true, but, like, wouldn't... I would be down for, like, a new adventure with someone that I'm, like, in love with. But, like, going... If you only grew up here, or, like, I don't know if you grew up here, but if you're... If you've been here for such a long time, and this is all you know, and then you move to this new city, especially if you've never been to the South, it's a culture shock. I think it could be a lot for someone who hasn't experienced anything other than Los Angeles. But they also, yeah. but he also has somewhat of a home base there because he has Kristen and um, Jay, and of course Scoot. So he has like a good solid foundation to at least, hopefully, not think of things as too slow or uncomfortable. You mm-hmm. know, like there's some love there, and I think. Hopefully he'll gravitate towards that. And, of course, he always can go to L.A. and do his jobs or whatever and come back. So as long as Scoot doesn't make it an issue for him traveling back and forth and he allows um, Justin to be uncomfortable or, or need to go to L.A. and come back or, you know, be able to communicate his fears without taking it personally and just being his support sounding board system type thing, Justin, I believe, will f- be able to settle in and be comfortable with his life. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think that's definitely difficult, though, when you're in a relationship. Like, Scoot obviously wants to be married and, like, settled in, like, yeah, family he's ready. life. Yeah, it sounds like he know? wants kids. Exactly. And I think, you know, Justin, obviously, he shows. He's a little bit more carefree. And so trying to create a balance of just communication and freedom. I think also the other scary thing is to feel, like, confined or to feel mm-hmm. like you can't do anything mm-hmm. that you really want to do because mm-hmm. you don't want to hurt the other person. Totally. Mm-hmm. So I think that's also, like, another fear. Like, if we move into this house, it's like, I'm we're here together. Like, yeah. we're stuck. We're we are together. We're responsible. Other. So, you know, it, it it is a definitely, like, a different type of um, responsibility. But like totally. Kristen said, it's time for him to grow up. And yeah. his sister said it, and he he knows it. So, different step, different I chapter. am excited to see that play out. That is one yeah. of the things I'm excited about. Um, you guys, we're, we're at a commercial tonight. We're watching the show. And uh, Ebene goes, do you all want to take a bet if you think that Scoot or that Justin's going to surprise Scoot with the house. I'm like, no way, no way. Yes, he was doubting me, and you guys. She, and, doubting me. Yeah, and Ebene and was, was right. Was right. <laughs> yes, I knew it. I mean, I knew it was either a proposal or it was the dang house. Because, you know, he'd like, I keep driving by it, blah. Like, he gave us a little bit of a hint. So I was like, ooh, what's it going to be? But I think that this was Justin's way of getting in front of moving things further With in terms of engagement or kids. Yeah. He's like, okay, look, I did this. I put an offer in the house. I didn't even ask for your money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, like, let's just calm things down. And That's... it didn't slow Scoot down one second. He was like, I was kind of disappointed it wasn't a proposal. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but don't so you think you that's a little somebody. dangerous mindset right there to be like, hey, I'm going to dangle this carrot in your face so that you can kind of, like, gnaw on it for a second that's me. before... <laughs> what? But isn't that crazy? Like, you <laughs> no, know, like, it's, that's it's exactly not healthy right. behavior. Yeah, I mean, I think they should. I think they should be. He should be more communicative to uh, Scoot. I mean, but I feel like he has kind of said it. Justin has said it. He's kind of been like, eh, "I'm not really ready," and Scoot's like, "But I want this." Yeah. You know, but so he was like, like you said, he literally gave the carrot to Nebulon for the time being, so I think, that he could get himself together. Yeah, I think. <laughs> I, I mean, I kind of think it's, it's uh, it's fine to do in the sense that they are making a commitment that is furthering their relationship, which is something Scoot wanted. It's not necessarily exactly what he wanted, but are things really, do we ever get exactly what we want? We eventually make it where we need to be. You know, yeah, it's it's a compromise. And who the fuck wants to get married when 
you don't know if you want to get married. If one person doesn't know, like, you don't want to get married. So right. let's test it out by living together. Yeah. I mean, I think it's logic. I mean, for me, it's pretty logically smart. You don't want to not be living with someone and then but first get married and then you find out living with them they're terrible or you don't get along or you have completely different tastes like it's just like you don't want to not have sex with the person before you get in a relationship with them you know a lot of things old traditionally are asked backwards and now i think we were we have the opportunity to be like let's just try this first you know let's see what but this see, is like but then doesn't that kind of like back out of like aren't you backpedaling a little bit out of the commitment so it's like i'm giving you like half, I'm ha committing halfway but not fully well, what he's no, he's he, they're fully committed to each other. What is happening? He's saying, I'm not going to give you what you want because I'm not sure I'm ready. So I'm not. So he's just protecting himself and keeping that distance a little bit and, while. Yeah, and I I'm with Justin on this. Like, let's slow down. We're moving across the country. That's a big step. Yeah. We're buying a house huge. together, probably a two million dollar house. That's a big step. Like, slow your roll. Yeah. All right. You Let know. things happen. I don't know, but I think if Justin is like doesn't want to get married then he definitely should express that well he just doesn't know yet he thinks we're moving really fast to it's be been married five years, and have you a guys house. let's not forget it's not like they've been dating for three months it's well, been we five know where she years stands. yeah <laughs> i'd be okay with never getting married i mean this is my and thing be, you know this is my thing you have justin on one end and scoot on another and it's like you can't make a relationship work if one wants to move forward and one wants to keep it back like, and eventually, that's going to I don't think one wants to necessarily keep it back. He just wants to slow it down and do something. But I'm saying they're not on the same page. No, and that's I That's my point. It's like they're not on the same page, so it's like fight, one wants... Fight, yeah, fight, it's like fight. one so wants... No, <laughs> <laughs> um, one wants to get married, and the other one's like, I don't know if I do. I want to slow down. I want to blah. And it feels like he doesn't want to fully commit. In scoot size, if that makes sense. Like, yeah. You want to get? I want to get married, and you don't. And I'm gonna feel like, why don't you want to get married? What's up with you? What's like? What? What's holding you back? Why are you not wanting to commit the way I want to? No, I totally you understand know? scoot where scoot's coming from. But the most important thing I think scoot needs to just do is chill out because the the more you press a guy, yeah. The more you press anyone, they're gonna run the fuck away. Mm -hmm. It just it just is the way it is. Or they're they accept and you guys get married and he ends up cheating on you or she ends up cheating on you or the relationship it was like fucking pressure and it they was didn't pressure. want that. So, yeah. they, so I know they're not on the same page now, but if Scoot can just take himself out of this, like his desires just for a little bit out of it and be grateful for the movement that they're doing and kind of set get compromised so that they can be on the same page. Yeah. It's going to be much better for him in the long run. It, it really is. You, you don't judge. And, Justin's gonna come around. He's a fast-paced LA fucking city guy. Right. He's not. He he's not small town, mid midtown, or you know, mid USA type of person. Where that's a natural step. You know, he's used to having sex with whoever he wants. I'm sure he's the hot shot in LA. You know, he's, there's a lot of things he has to work through. And if Scoot can be patient and understanding, he's gonna get the guy in the end. Yeah. Just you know. But yeah. you press it, you're not gonna get the guy that you actually want to be with, and you're gonna end up settling for someone else. Yeah. Because they will settle down with you. Well, we got a lot to say on that. Oh, uh, yeah. I think we can keep going. We, we do need to move on. But guys, yeah. let us know what you think on that because that is a very interesting conversation, especially it's very relatable, and we want to know what you guys think. Let's move on to our special segment. Miss uh, Ebony, take it away. Like a boss. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So <laughs> I am going to pick, I guess I'll go first. Yeah, who who was your uh, yeah, most so, bossy person so we in a good to, way? So everyone is going to pick the person that they thought bossed up in this episode. So I'm going to say Jay because Jay kind of bossed up with those little miniature ponies. He was literally not letting go of those miniature ponies. He was like, I want a pony. I mean, pony. It was a donkey. I'm yeah. sorry. The miniature donkeys, that's what he wanted. And he kept bringing it up even when Kristen's like, look at my, look amazing, at my amazing warehouse. All right, And he's yeah. like, and what about those donkeys tomorrow? Yeah. Like, he was just so <laughs> set on them. I I do have to admit they were very, very, very cute. So if they do get the donkeys, I mean, I guess the kids will be happy to play with mm -hmm. play with yeah, them. Totally. It's like little miniature ponies they it's could like ride or something. To the farm. Yeah, they can make a little unicorn, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> Aww, that's a great idea. A diamond. Um, I'm gonna say the person who bossed up was Justin. I think I made my my point very clear. If it was a little annoying, I don't care. Um, I think he bossed up simply because he made the next step that he was contemplating not doing or having some 
you know, une uneasy feelings about it. He he took the next step and committed to a house with this with Scoot. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Eric. My boss moment tonight, like a boss, goes to Roger. Wait, who's Roger? Uh, with the donkey? Yeah! Oh. <laughs> because he put his ass in Kristen's face. He like did. A boss. I'm done oh. with you. <laughs> I was not expecting that at all. When a man backs his ass up into a woman's face, <laughs> that is a boss move. That's a boss move? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to look out for that next time I go oh, out. Back Ryan. it up, back it up, back it up, back it up, back it up. <laughs> Face down, shade ass up. All right. <laughs> All right, enough of that. Let's let's take it back to PG land. Um, Mr. Diamond, can you lead us into some spicy news? Um, yeah. I can. Okay, you guys. So I was creeping a little bit on Instagram as I do, and um, I came across Britney's post. And um, you know, just three days ago, Britney is snuggled up with Hunky's trainer boy PJ. Um, they're on a date in Arrington Vineyards, which is just 25 miles south of Nashville. Um, and you know, I thought it was adorable and sweet. But then I tapped on PJ's little tag, and I see that. Oh, just not so long ago either he posted some lovey-dovey photos up from that same exact trip so you know I'll, while we're speculating on will they or won't they last we kind of know the answer and then I was scrolling through the, their Instagram and I was seeing posts with them back in September of 2019 and and then the most recent one was of course like I said like a few days ago so obviously these people holding strong they're holding strong yeah. Brittany is in her routine of being in a long distance or long term relationship and um, bounce back. Right yeah, down. she bounced right back into a relationship. <laughs> Boom. Um, not truly fully understanding herself. I don't know. I don't think. But what do you guys think? I don't know. She's a grown woman. She can make her own decisions. Honey. I mean, if you're yeah. feeling him. Fill him. You Get only have about deal. like an you know an inch and a half of life. So go ahead and do what you got to do. That's all yeah. I gotta say. Live it YOLO. Mm -hmm. Brittany, if you're happy, we're happy. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, moving along <laughs> to uh, predictions for next Your week. After Buzz TV predictions. A diamond. Well, you know, we did kind of get a little sneak peek on the preview, and Kristen is still missing her friend Kelly. Um, I'm going to just go out on a limb and say Kelly responds finally, and <laughs> maybe they can start a relationship. Okay. Again, yeah. Um, we do see that Heidi and Adriana are <laughs> sorry. To me every week. I'm sorry, we're gonna let you go next time. Right? We're gonna let you go next time. Um, uh, Heidi and Adriana do come back, so I think that they're gonna kind of. I'm not gonna say get involved in the drama, but I feel like they're definitely gonna be. Um, I feel like you know they're gonna have something they're to gonna, say for sure. Yeah. Like yeah. They'll, they'll be in the mix a little. They'll be bit. in the show. I'm just excited for the nostalgic feels next week Me that we're gonna too. have. I think um, I think Audrina and Heidi are gonna bring some spice that we've kind of been wanting and a, a change of pace. Yeah, they bring different energy. Yeah, so and it's nice. It'll be nice to see where they are at in life too, because they all have kids. Yeah, so it's insane. Yeah, and they were you know kind of talking a little bit. I saw we saw in the preview that they were just talking a little bit about. When fame hits, yeah. you'll just you'll find out who your friends are. So that'll be a really good conversation. And I bet Kristen feels a little more at home, like these girls she came up with, you know. Right. And so it's gonna be, yeah, like you said or you said, it's nostalgic. But I think it's gonna be really deep for Kristen. Yeah, I think I, th from what we saw, I think Audrina is going to talk Kristen out of missing her friendship. With yeah, Kelly. maybe. With Kelly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So. Take back my prediction. If it's worth it for you, you gotta go for it. I think. Yeah, we will see. Bye. That was a uh, that was a good show, guys. Yeah. Good one. You guys have fun at home. I hope so. We're gonna sign off, but a uh, diamond. Where can our after buzzers find you? All right, you guys can find me on Instagram and Twitter at not your type n o t underscore y u r underscore t y p e. And you can find me on Twitter and on Instagram at Ebony Chapman 12 And you guys can find me on all social media at Eric Sinsley. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Bye. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.